All right, so now that you understand that Laravel Breeze is a thing that you can use at the start of any new project, in this episode, we'll figure out how to manually implement the logic for a registration and login system. So I'm going to peg this at nine minutes. Let's get going. Now, let's begin within the browser. Of course, I'll need to create the markup for a registration and a login form. But luckily, we've done some of this work already. If I click on Create Job, yeah, we have the general layout for a form field. So why don't we extract these into a couple of blade components, and then we can rapidly build some new forms. I will go to Jobs slash Create. All right, and let's see. What you see right here represents a single form field. Notice it contains a form label, a form input, and a form validation error. So with that in mind, why don't we create a handful of new components? One will be called form label.blade.php. I'll duplicate that. The next one will be form error. And then one more time, this will be form input. Cool. So now think about it. If I switch back to our create view, we can just move some of these over. So I will take that label. It's going to be replaced with X form label, and then I can move it here. OK, now the four attribute that can all be merged in from the outside. And then this, of course, can't be hard coded. That could either be a prop itself or it could be the default slot, whatever you want. OK, so let's merge in any attributes by saying attributes merge, but set the default uh, attributes, in this case class, to what you see here. And let's close that out. All right, that looks good. So now let's switch back. This is the label for the title, so I will add that here. And then we will set the slot. So this would be title. All right, next, why don't we do the validation error? X form error, Whoop, whoops, I'm sorry, I forgot to add the blade extension. All right, switch back one more time. Form error. Let's switch over, paste in that code. All right, so it looks like we need to pass in the title. Why don't we accept that as a prop? That will be the name for this error. That's now available as a variable within the component, so I can reference it here, and that looks good. All right, let's switch back. Name is title in this case, and this can be self-closing. And then finally, I think this whole thing can be our form input. So extract that. We want X form inputs, and I will move it over here. All right, so let's see. All of the attributes are going to be passed directly to this child input. So the default uh, type for an input is text already, so I can remove that. These will be passed in. So let's do that now real quick. Paste that in, all right. And then finally, we have these long classes. I will cut those temporarily. And yeah, everything else can be passed in. Cool. So let's say attributes, merge, set the class to uh, what you see here. And everything else, yeah, once again, can be passed in from the outside. So let's go back to create. And placeholder will be CEO. And this will be required. OK, so now we've cleaned things up just a little bit. Here's what we had before. If I give it a refresh, yeah, this all seems about the same. Let's inspect it and make sure all of the attributes are being applied properly. So here is our field. Here's the label for the title. Does the input also have a name of title? Yeah, all of this looks pretty good to me. Why don't we also submit it? Oh, the required attribute is taking effect. But if I removed it and we hit the server, hmm. Oh, yeah, we have to do that one too. Let's see. Let's comment that out for now. All right. Now we are seeing the contents of the form error component, and that looks good as well. Cool. So let's do this. Um, should we create a form field? Uh, I'm going to show you because it might be helpful to you, but if you want to skip it, you can. All right, so we're going to add one more here called form field.blade.php. And then if I switch back, it's basically everything you see here. But everything here, the label, the input, and the error will be passed in from the outside. So I'll just say, whatever you want to pass in will be deposited here. Cool. So let's come back. All right, so now this div becomes X form field, and I can remove the class. Okay, back to the browser. Give it a refresh. Everything works just like it did before. Okay, so now this is going to save us a great amount of time. If I come back, I want to do another one for the salary. So we are reproducing what you see here. 
Let's just get rid of it entirely and update it. Salary. I think our placeholder was 50,000 USD. And then I will update this. Come back, refresh. That works. Submit it. Validations in effect. Yeah, this is much cleaner than we had before. Okay, so now we had some example validation um, logic. I'm going to get rid of that entirely. And this is kind of what your form looks like. All right. And now, by the way, I know we're spending a lot of time on these blade components, but trust me, it's going to pay off once we start constructing those other forms. So the last thing I'm going to work on is why don't we extract our submit button into a dedicated component? So this would become something like X form button. Do you want it to be a primary button, a default button, whatever you want, whatever you think makes sense. OK, so let's add this here. Form button dot blade dot PHP. I'll paste that in, and here's what we'll do. I'm going to rewrite this whole thing so that I can say attributes, merge, the default class is what you see here, and the default type is submit, all right? And then this can be your slot. All right, we have it. Back to our create view. This will now be save in this particular case. OK, come back, give it a refresh. I can still uh, interact with it like usual. But now, yeah, we've componentized it, uh, if that's a word. OK, so now, yeah, there's a couple other things we could do here, but it's good enough for now. So I'm going to copy all of our view here, switch back to my routes file, and let's prepare uh, some auth routes. Route, get, register, that's our endpoint. And we will call this controller anything you want. Registration controller, register controller. Uh, Laravel does registered user controller. Anything that makes sense to you. Now, what is the action? Well, this is the page to create a new registered user. So we call it create. OK, but now, of course, my editor is squawking because I haven't yet created that controller. PHP artisan make controller. And I'll paste that in. Cool. So now. I can right click and say import in PHP Storm, or of course you can manually import it at the top. Okay, so now of course we can go to app, HTTP controllers, registered user controller, and let's add our action to create. So if you want, let's do sanity check. Did we hit this endpoint? Back to the browser, let's go to example.test slash register, and we did. Okay, so let's return a view. And why don't we put this all under an auth namespace? Maybe something like that. Cool. So let's go down to views. Let's have a new directory called auth and a new view called register.blade.php. OK, so now I'm going to paste in all of that form code from our job create view. Let's update a couple things. Register. Um, we don't need any headings. And yeah, let's just see how this looks. Come back. Give it a refresh. And yeah. That looks decent. So now, and actually real quick, I see title is duplicated. Let's fix that real quick. Come back here. Salary. Sorry about that. I know you saw that. Anyways, if we switch back, if you want to register, you need to give us what? Well, we can check our database table. If I open users, yep, we need a first name, a last name, and an email address as well as a password. OK, let's do this quickly. First name. Uh, and by the way, if you don't want to watch, feel free to fast forward. I will use multiple cursors. First name. No placeholder on the input is necessary. Here's an idea for a name, Joe. And then I'll do the same thing for the next one. All right, last name. Last name. And same thing, no placeholder necessary. OK, are we on the right track? First name, last name, looks good. Let's keep going. So I can duplicate this. We need an email address. But then on the input itself, I will override the type to be email. All right. And then finally, we need actually two fields for the password. So one will be what you see here, just your standard password. Now, of course, in this case, I will set the type to password because that would make sense. If I come back and refresh, there you go. First name, last name, email, password. And actually, on this note, just a quick one, but from my experiences, it would actually be more helpful to make the user repeat their email address rather than the password. That's the one people always miss. I know it's hard to believe, but I have the receipts. It happens over and over and over again.
But anyways, we will stick with tradition for now. So I will have a password confirmation field. Password confirmation, or why don't we say confirm password? And now we're going to follow a convention here, which is password underscore confirmation. And I'll explain that more shortly. All right, so switch back. And yeah, here is our form. So just a couple of things. Why don't we reduce the margin here on the parent? I can just remove that entirely. Yep. And then finally, save doesn't make sense. It should probably say register. So right down here, register. And then next, this shouldn't be a button. This can be a simple anchor tag that takes you back to the homepage. All right, so finally, which of the inputs should be required? Actually, in this case, I think everything. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to select all of these and then go to the end with multiple cursors and set required. Saves a little bit of time. Okay, so now if I try to register, it's going to make me fill out each of the fields, as you see here. Cool. Okay, so now let's once again copy this, and I'm going to create another form for uh, signing in. Let's call this one login.blade.php. I'll paste it in. We'll say log in. Of course, we will update the form attributes uh, for both of these forms shortly. But yeah, to log in, you don't need a first name. You don't need a last name. You just need to give us um, your email address as well as your password. So let's get rid of that as well. And then this can become log in. So let's close that out. I'll go back to register. And now let's work through where this form should submit. Uh, you have a couple of choices. You can you can strictly follow kind of a restful approach uh, or, or you can change it up. Remember, rarely are there hard rules. Uh, there's just guidelines or systems that you follow for your team. In this case, I think it's fine and simple to submit a post request to slash register. All right, that's our next step. Go back to our routes file. All right, let's duplicate. Listen for a post request to slash register, and that will hit the store action. Again, we're just following conventions here. Come back, create our action, die and dump to do. That will all be in the next episode. For this episode, we're only focused on the HTML logic. Yeah, if I say Jeff, Joe, blah, 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 add some dummy password, register, sure enough, we hit that endpoint. And of course, if you quickly want to see all of the attributes from that form, you can run request all. So if I hit command R, there you go. Okay, so now if I come back to my routes file, let's finish up the login form. So we'll say listen for a get request to slash login. And yeah, once again, what do you want this controller to be? Anything you want. Login controller, session controller, login user controller. It doesn't matter. I often go with session controller. That makes sense to me. We're creating a new session. We're storing a session. We're destroying a session. But again, you can be creative. All right, so this is going to show the create action on a new session controller. Let's create it. PHP artisan make controller session controller. All right, import that. Command click, add our action. And this will now return a view auth.login. Now, we've already created that view, so I can click through, and this is what we get. Let's see if it works in the browser. Let's go to log in, and there we go. Good. So now, where should this form submit? Well, once again, if we're creating a new session, then we would make a post request to uh, either login, or if you want to have a new endpoint like sessions, any of that would work. But yeah, we're going to keep this super simple. A post request to slash login will do the trick. All right, let's create that right now. Let's duplicate this. We're now listening for a post request to slash login and following conventions that will hit a store action. So I can create that one as well, store. And once again, we will die and dump the request as a to-do placeholder. Come back, refresh. Let's try to log in. The validation takes effect. We use dummy data. We hit that endpoint. Very cool. It works. Okay, so now to wrap up this part one, uh, we should display some login links, maybe right up here. I'll get rid of these uh, and replace them. All right, so let's go to our layout component. And yeah, here's that nav section. And many episodes ago, we created a nav link component for each of these that you see here. So let's just add one to the far right. All right, so let's see. Yeah, so we have this button that contains an SVG. 
that's this section here. We're going to get rid of these, and then I'll get rid of the profile as well. Okay, X nav link login, come back, refresh, and that works. Okay, so this will take us to href login. And if I click on it, there we go. Okay, what about registration? Well, we can do another one here, like you see. And yeah, that would work. So we now have a register link. That looks great. But keep in mind, once you're signed in, it might be weird to see a login and register button in the navigation area. You're already logged in. You're already registered. So in these situations, it's helpful to check the authentication status to determine what markup we create. And I'll give you a quick tip for how to do that. Okay, so I will introduce two new Blade directives that I want you to be aware of. The first one is called Auth, and it does exactly what you think it does. If you're authenticated, then display whatever markup I have within here. Now, of course, we can also do the opposite, guest. If you are a guest of our application, then do whatever you see here. Okay, so if you think about it, this would make sense. Only on the condition that you're a guest should we display a login and register link. So if I come back and refresh this page, sure enough, I see them because I have not yet signed in. And that would make sense. Okay, last thing I want to do here is if I click on my nav link component, we can pass through an active status. So yeah, just like we did with home and jobs, we should provide some additional styling if you are on uh, that page. So if I come back for login, I can say, make this one active if the request is login. And then I'll do the same thing for register. Like so. Now, if I switch back and refresh, yeah, we just have a little extra feedback, which can be helpful. Okay, I think we're making pretty good progress here. All right, I get it. I know what you're thinking. I can read your mind. This was definitely, absolutely, certainly one of the more boring episodes in the course. But folks, what do you want me to do? It's form code. It has to be written. My hands are tied here. We had to do it. Uh, and we did do it. So good job. We made it through this lesson. And now in the next episode, we can focus on what I consider to be some more fun logic. So stay tuned for that. You're halfway through. Let's keep going.